Hello, this is your instructor, Mr. Ellsworth, and today we're going to learn a bit about uh, classes and abstractions. Um, we have treated uh, data values as passive quantities to be acted upon by functions. That is, we have passed values to and from functions as arguments, and our functions perform some operations. C++ programming, and today uh, we're going to talk about the C++ classes. Objectives. The student will be able to distinguish a class constructor from a member function. The student will be able to create an active data structure. The student will be able to declare a class object of a given class. The essential question, how do you declare and manipulate objects of a particular class? C++ classes. The separation of operations and data does not correspond very well with the notion of an abstract data type. An ADT consists of both data values and operations on those values. It is preferable to view an ADT as defining an active data structure, one that contains both data and operations within a single cohesive unit. C++ supports this view through the structure type known as the class. The C++ language has four structure types available for use, the array, the struct, the union, and the class. A class can be used to represent a record, but it is almost always designed so that its components include not only data, but also functions that manipulate the data. In C++, a struct is almost identical to a class, but because of its heritage from the C struct construct, more programmers use class to implement ADT and limit their use of struct to applications where a record is needed that has no associated operations. Class declaration. Uh, we use the keyword class, that's a lowercase c by the way, type name. Uh, we have the access modifier, uh, which is either uh, public or private, the, the order doesn't matter. And then uh, you would have, for example, you would have your public functions listed here. Uh, these are the functions that client code can use. And client code is code that is any code that's outside of the class. And then usually your variable list is uh, private. And here's an example of uh, our class time of day. Notice that the keyword class, the C is lowercase, and then this is the name of the class, and here we've declared public. Uh, by default, everything would normally be uh, automatically declared private, so when you say put the keyword public in here, everything that follows is then public until you use the keyword private. Uh, this is our, um, the first two are our constructors, uh, and when you declare a data, um, a type of uh, time of day, uh, the default constructor uh, are used. And we have two. This is one where you just declare it with no parameters, and the hours, minutes, and seconds will be declared uh, to a value of zero. They'll just be set to zero. And here, this is the one where you can actually put in a starting hours, uh, starting minutes, and starting seconds. Uh, we can use the same name because it does something that's called overwriting. And the uh, parameter list itself becomes uh, effectively part of the name uh, of the function. Then we have an increment function. This one is going to update the time by a single second. We have a write function, and this is how we uh, write the time object uh, 
to the screen or whatever. This is a testing function to see if uh, one time of day object is equal to another time of day object. And if they are equal, then the Boolean value true is returned. And then this case here is less than. So uh, time of day is compared to other time object. Um, the other time is also a time of day object. They have to be of the same type. And it'll return if it's less than, if the time of day object is less than, then it'll return true. Um, and then we declare private for our data. And there's only three uh, pieces of data in there, uh, an integer of hours, integer of minutes, and integer of seconds. The time of day class has nine members, four member functions, the increment function, the write function, the equal function, and the less than function, three member data variables, so hours, minutes, seconds, and two strange looking constructs that look something like functions but have no return value. They are examples of a special function called a class constructor. A constructor is a member function that is implicitly invoked whenever a class object is declared. Our class declaration includes two constructors differentiated by the parameter list. The first constructor doesn't have a parameter list, so all of the, you know, the data, the hours, the minutes, and seconds are all set to zero. And we'll actually write the function and actually write the values hours equals zero minutes equals zero, seconds equals zero. The second constructor has a parameter list, uh, and that's where we can uh, initially set the hours, minutes, and seconds to some value. Here, we're declaring uh, a start time as a time of day and creates a um, time of day object. And here, we're creating a second one, end time as a time of day object, but it's initially set with the hours at 10, uh, 24 minutes, and three seconds. The three data members, hours, minutes, and seconds, form the concrete data representation for the time of day abstract data type. Like a struct declaration, a declaration of the time of day class defines a data type, but does not create variables of the type. Class variables are created by using ordinary variable declarations. In other words, if we want to create uh, a time of day object, we would say we would write time of day time one, for example. Private class members can be accessed only by the class member functions. In the time of day class, the private variables, hours, minutes, and seconds can be accessed only within the member functions, increment, write, equal, and less than, not by client code. And as I previously stated, client code is any code that's outside of the class. And we consider that that's uh, a process known as, as hiding data. So you can't, somewhere else in the program, you can't accidentally change those variables. Um, that's a common cause of um, bugs in the past. Here is uh, our first constructor uh, time of day. And the values, we, uh, we just set them to zero. Notice that we use, um, when we declare it, we're using the two colons here uh, to separate. So this is time of day. This is the uh, effectively the function name, time of day, and it's the default uh, constructor. The default constructor has the same name as the class. Here's a second constructor. This one allows us to... Uh, set an initial hours and initial minutes and initial seconds. And notice what the difference is between the previous one and this one. Well, here, we're just taking this data and we're writing it into hours, uh, taking the minutes and writing it into minutes, and taking the seconds 
and writing it into seconds. Now, hours, minutes, and seconds inside of the time of day class, or the time, time I should say, time of day object, is not available to anything outside of the object. It's purely internal. You can only use the member functions to manipulate uh, the time. The increment function. In this function, we're returning a new object that is the same as the current object, except that has been incremented by one second. In C++, we also refer to the current object as the instance, meaning the object to which a member function is applied. The first step in incrementing is to declare a duplicate of the time of day object to which the function is applied. To do so, we need to call the parameterized constructor, passing it the data members of the current object. So you can see that right here. Notice we do not pass anything into the increment function because it resides inside the current object. So it has access to all of the values it needs to create the new object. Next, the second data member is incremented. If it's the value of 59, then it goes to zero. And minutes is then incremented. If minutes has a value of 59, it goes to zero and hours are incremented. And you can see the implementation of the increment function here. We declared our new object result. It has the hours, minutes, and seconds from our original time of day object, whatever that might have uh, been named. And you can see it, it, um, it increments seconds here. It tests the results. If it's greater than 59, so it's rolled over to 60, resets it to zero, and then it'll increment the minutes. Then it tests the minutes, and if it's also uh, incremented up to 60, then it's gonna reset it to zero, and it's gonna increment the hours. Hours does the same thing, but if it increments to 24, then it resets hours to zero. And then the updated value is returned. Look closely at the difference between how we access the member fields of the instance in the constructor call and how we access the fields of the result object. We can refer directly to members of the instance, hours, minutes, and seconds. When we want to access members of another object, however, we must use the dot notation, just as we did for a struct, and in this case, result.hours, result.minutes, and result.seconds. Okay, uh, let's go on to the write uh, function. To make the time uniform, we want to print two digits for each field. So we must check whether the value in each field is a single digit. If it is, we must print as zero before we print the value. Again, notice nothing is passed into write. It automatically has access to the member fields of the instance. Uh, here's the implementation of our function of right. Notice that it's checking hours. If hours is less than 10, then it pre-writes a zero. Uh, then it writes the time uh, separated with a colon. Uh, here, minutes, it's, uh, less than uh, 10. So it writes a zero. And then it writes the actual time. If it, if it was greater than 10, it would just uh, skip this line and go directly here. So our time's going to print out something like this. Um, so if, you know, like if it was um, equal to or larger than 10, it just printed the 10, right? In this case here, this was less than 10, so it printed the 0, then it printed the 5. Less than function. Uh, this is a Boolean function, uh, and the operation compares two objects of class time of day. The first instance 
and the second is passed in through a parameter of the function, as we saw with increment, the data members of the instant can be accessed directly, but the data members of the other time object must be accessed with the dot notation. And here's the implementation. Uh, this is or, this is and. And it's just returning a true or false. Excuse me, it's returning a true or a false. So it's checking, is hours less than other time hours, or is hours equal to other time hours, and, and so on. The equal function uh, is very similar to the less than function. The two objects are being uh, compared uh, by equal, are the instance to which the function is applied, and the parameters. The function returns true if all three data fields are identical. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's going to return a false. And here's the implementation. And notice it's just returning a Boolean. So it's going to be returning a true or a false. So if they're actually exactly the same, so it has to compare each, each of the data fields, right? So here it's comparing hours to hours. And it's comparing minutes to minutes and it's comparing seconds to seconds. If these are all true, then the results returned is going to be true. But if any one of them are false, then the results uh, returned will be false. Classes, objects, and members. It's important to restate that a class is a type, not an object. Like any type, a class is a pattern from which you create many concrete values of that type. With a class, these values are called objects. We say we instantiate the class to make an object. An object is an instance of its class. Here's a, a declaration that we might use in our mainline code. Here we're declaring uh, the object time one as time of day type, right? And this one, the hours, minutes, and seconds would all be set to zero because it's using uh, the default constructor, which had no parameter list. This case here, time two, our object time two, is going to be use the uh, uh, second constructor because we're giving it an initial time of 17 hours, 58 minutes, and two seconds. So we're creating two objects that are instances of the time of day class, time one and time two. Okay, our takeaways for today. C++ supports the view of an ADT as defining an active data structure, one that contains both data and operations within a single cohesive unit. A class can be used to represent a record, but is almost always designed so that it, its components include not only the data, but also functions that manipulate the data. And again, the idea is we want to do um, data hiding so that other parts of the program cannot accidentally change one of our values. Takeaway three, private class members can be accessed only by the class member functions and not by client code. And again, client code is any code um, that's outside of the class. Um, that's it for this lesson. Um, so until uh, the next lesson, Happy programming.